<laughs> I promise you I am not trying to set fire to my studio. <laughs> I am simply making these lovely, lovely little hanging ornaments, these discs of alder for our solstice tree and working away on these because today's vlogmas is actually about all about handmade Christmas decorations. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to vlogmas on wool and the forest and this is episode two. I am Ducky. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back. If you are coming back after the last vlogmas, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that's why you're coming back obviously <laughs> and if you are new to the channel welcome I'm happy to have you here my name is Ducky as I said I'm the host of Wool in the Forest you can find me on Instagram as at Wool in the Forest and my website is woolandtheforest.com and you can also find me on Patreon as patreon slash wool and the forest so uh, here we are um, Vlogmas episode two and I wanted to have a slightly more chatty episode today. However, <laughs> believe it or not, it's not very late in the day at all, but it looks as dark as midnight out there. Um, well, okay, fine. Not as dark as midnight, but it is so dark that there is literally no time that is early enough to shoot with plenty of light. So um, the Vlogmas episodes are going to be a little bit on the dark side, at least in the studio. Um, the days are getting shorter. Solstice is only two or three days away. Oh, it's on Wednesday and you can really tell. The entire forest, there's a hush to it. It's like the trees, the bare branches of the alders and the maples, they're so still, they're so silent. It's like everything is just preparing for a deep, deep sinking into slumber. And you can really feel it in the earth and in all the natural things around us in this blessed, blessed place we call home. And um, yeah, you can feel it in the air. <laughs> Solstice is very near. So uh, we are preparing a way in the cottage for um, everything, all the festivities to come. And that's what you'll see today on Vlogmas uh, is us getting ready for the winter solstice celebrations. I'm sorry if I uh, if I'm sniffling and if I'm doing it unconsciously. I had a few people mention on my last podcast episode, not my vlogmas, that I'm sniffling too much, <laughs> and it's because I'm afraid it's because of this studio, as beautiful and as lovely a space as it is. Um, over the last few years, the wildlife, <laughs> namely the Douglas squirrels, our uh, most beloved nature friends and my husband's arch nemesis, um, the Douglas squirrels have done away with the underfloor insulation of the studio. So the floor is incredibly, incredibly cold and no matter how much I heat it, um, the floor remains quite icy and it's one of the reasons that I find it so difficult to work here over the winter to continue my textile work especially. Um, it's because the insulation is simply gone. They've just, over the years, just, you know, helped themselves to it. <laughs> so probably keeping themselves warm um, over their winter times. So not doing anything for my cold feet, of course. And uh, that's actually one of my goals, my Patreon goals for this coming year is to raise enough funds to put in new underfloor insulation so that my husband can do that um, so that I can extend my working season for my textile work especially, which is something I rely on, uh, something we rely on as family for income, um, to be able to extend that time period during the winter. So that's why you, I'm sniffling. I'm a, a warm-blooded 
island born Sri Lankan girl, so <laughs> I'm very sensitive to the cold. I will be conscious today not to sniffle as much though. So um, let's see, what else do we have to say? Oh yes, so I need to remind you that this is the penultimate Vlogmas episode for 2022. I will have the time to do another one just before the solstice or maybe perhaps even on the winter solstice uh, if it's not too busy. And then that will be it for this year. And I plan on doing a podcast, sort of returning back to podcast, after Christmas, I think. I have a giveaway winner to draw and another giveaway to do. So if you're just finding this channel through this episode of the Vlogmas, please go back to episode 10 of the podcast and you will find that I'm doing a giveaway for a very, very wonderful, important knitting book, knitting uh, piece of knitting treasury, as it were. That giveaway is still running, so you can go and join in if you like. So this is the one before the last Vlogmas episode. Um, yes, <laughs> what else? Um, so I will tell you a little bit about what I'm wearing today, if you can even see. Well, actually the lighting is not too bad. So ooh, I am wearing today a very, very old knit. I will get up so you can have a little bit better look at it all. This is something I knitted a very long time ago when I was still living in Korea. Um, I don't know, long time ago. I had I didn't even ha didn't even have babies at this time. Um, so more than nine years ago, since my oldest daughter is nine this year, <laughs> so. Uh, I was knitting this in Korea, I knitted out of, I don't know what yarn, a brandless yarn I picked up somewhere in Dongdaemun uh, district. It's the sort of, uh, I guess the fabric district of Seoul. And I knit a very chunky, chunky cabled pattern. It's seamed, it's knit from the bottom up, it's, it's knit sort of kind of like a diamond shape and then just seamed together. And it's got bobbles in there. I cannot for the life of me remember what the pattern is, who wrote it, because this was well before I uh, knew about the online knitting world. So yeah, it's a very old knit. It's pilled and slightly felted and I'm, n I'm not even sure it's 100% wool. I don't think it is because it has been accidentally through the washing machine and the <laughs> a few times and it survived. So it's um, it's a little bit felted, uh, but not too much. And I am wearing with it one of my favorite buttock skirts. Not something that I made. This is not one of my buttock designs. It's from Sri Lanka. It's something my mother gifted to me uh, many years ago and has seen me through many, well, all four of my pregnancies. So that's what I am wearing. And what about what I'm knitting at the moment? through these beautiful, lovely days leading up to the winter solstice. Well, I'm still working away. <laughs> I'm still working away. Oh, <laughs> I'm just transferring things from basket to basket. I'm still working away on my mystery knit. Um, I still got some of that there on my needles and um, if you watch the last episode of the podcast, you will know that I'm doing this little mystery knit. I'm trying to get all of you to dis, um, to guess what I'm knitting in in uh, segments of triangles. And some couple of you have actually already guessed it. So that's what I'm, whenever I have the chance, I love just picking it up. And it's just wonderful, squishy garter, garter stitch. And uh, it's wonderful to just, you know, whenever I have two minutes here, five minutes there just to work on it. And inside my basket of woolen friends, I have my little Owly. <laughs> this is little Owly. Um, she is a needle felted owl that I made as a series of three owls. Um, when I was pregnant with my third daughter, I made these three needle felted owls um, and they were big sister owl, middle sister owl and baby sister owl because the baby was still in my womb at the time 
and uh, they're adorable. I had so much fun making them and the girls have had their way with them uh, for you know a couple of years but they don't really play with them anymore. So I keep finding that these little owls want to play with my woolly friends and they keep finding their way into my project baskets and my project bags. I just, I just love having them there. And the other day uh, my daughter actually asked me, she looked into my into this basket here and she said mama why do you have this owl in your knitting basket you don't need you know you don't need it to knit with you don't use it in your knitting and when i was giving her the answer to that question in giving her the answer to that question you know i had a bit of a realization about my relationship with knitting to begin with and what i realized was that the experience of sitting there with wool in my hands with working on something and hearing the click of the needles and all of that the experience of seeing these beautiful hand wound you know balls of yarn i mean look at this one of my hands spun from uh swedish fiber from hone och ear same people who make newton yarn i mean just watching these sitting in my basket as i not even I'm knitting, sometimes I'm just seeing it sitting on, on, on a side table somewhere. That is what brings me so much joy. Uh, it's not really about what I will end up with, what product I will end up with. It's so much more about this experience of it. And having this little creature, this woolly creature in my basket just enhances that so much more. And... Um, I realize that that's what I love about knitting, about making with my hands to begin with. So what about you? Do you keep little treasures in your making baskets and in your project bags? Um, let me know in the comments. I love to hear how you, you know, relate to these crafts and relate to your knitting. Everyone has their own way of bringing some magic to their making process. So I have baubles <laughs> to celebrate the festive season and I have my little felted owl. So yes, I'm continuing to work on those. I am also working on some lovely delights. Look at these guys. What are they, you might ask? Well, these are made out of knitted and these are crochet Christmas baubles that are being made at the moment. Um, these are actually based off of a pattern that I shared for free on an Instagram reel last Christmas where I ended up with these guys. These are made out of crochet cotton, cotton yarn. And I did this little reel just, just sharing a free pattern on how to do some overlay crochet and come out with these beautiful, beautiful little hanging ornaments for your tree uh, at solstice time. And it was a great hit. People really appreciated it. And I loved making these. I made so many this time last year because I was pregnant and just coming out of being very ill in my first semester. So I didn't really have the motivation to do much else than make baubles. And they brought me a lot of joy making these. So based on those, with lots of little modifications, I am making these unspun crochet baubles. Now, I'm going to bring the pattern for these. See, I have some rounds ready at the moment. I'm going to bring the pattern for these um, in the next vlogmas. So I'm, I'm just kind of writing out the pattern, just modifying my previous one so that it fits uh, unspun yarn. And I will just talk about it and share the pattern freely here on uh, the description box of the next vlogmas. So if you're interested, please do come back. Uh, to the to the channel. Ooh, that reminds me to ask you if you are enjoying what I'm doing, if you're enjoying these videos, if you're liking the vibe of this whole place, please do subscribe. Please like, please leave a comment. It really helps for my channel to be discovered um, and also helps for you to be notified when I come out with new uh, new videos like the next one where I will share the pattern for this. So that's something to look forward to for the final Vlogmas episode and these grow so fast. You could definitely crochet one of these in, I don't know, 
half an hour. So two rounds easily in an hour, but if, you, if you're a fast crochet, you could probably do two rounds in an hour, which means you could make quite a few baubles, uh, crochet baubles by um, Christmas time. And so there's plenty of time for you to make these and hang them up in your tree. Anyway, there's more about that in the next Vlogmas. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, as I said. I want you to go and enjoy the vlog and see all the wonderful, lovely uh, handmade ornaments that we've been busy with the past week. Oh, it's been lovely. Um, all the girls have been joining me in uh, helping me to make our handmade ornaments, but my eldest, who is extremely talented with her hands, especially, is now becoming uh, even more capable with certain things that she wasn't quite comfortable with before. So she's been helping me tons and you, her and I have just been having a blast. Um, just a lovely, wonderful time making things together for the tree. Um, so that, that's, that's been really lovely for the past few days doing that with them. So I hope you enjoy all the sights of us doing that and you know this <laughs> I forgot to tell you anything about this these lovely little discs um, are discs of alder uh, from all the various forest what, what should we say forestry forest custodianship looking after the forest that we live in um, we'd spend a lot of time my husband especially in the spring and summer he spends a lot of time consciously and very intentionally maintaining up the property, uh, the forest, in a certain way that so that wildlife can thrive, so that trees can thrive, so that you know trees that are not doing too well will be thinned out. Other trees can have more space and soil and nutrients to grow. Um, his own sort of form of coppicing. Um, I don't know if you know what that term is. If you do, you know what I'm speaking of. And as a result, of course, we end up with lots of branches and little saplings. And these, this is from an alder sapling, which he um, saws down into discs, sands, and then he gives them to us every year to do what we will. So the girls sometimes will paint these in watercolors. Um, last year, we started this practice of wood burning. Now, my husband is a incredibly talented with wood burning. I am not <laughs> incredibly talented, but I do my best. Um, and I, ha I have fun with, you know, turning out little, you know, simple shapes like stars and stuff. Um, but when we want very complex and very pretty things to happen, we give the discs to him and he, oh, he draws. He, he can just draw with this wood burning tool in a way that I, I couldn't even imagine being able to do that. But I still have fun doing these simple little designs and they go up on our tree and they look so pretty. So our tree is full of handmade ornaments and um, this year as well as every year we add to our ornament collection everything made by hand uh, as much as possible sourced from within uh, the forest and of natural materials. And now, after many years, the only Christmas decorations that are remaining on the tree that are not handmade are the baubles that were on the tree the night my first baby was born. I have some beautiful glass baubles um, that were hanging on the tree during my first home birth. And I labored under that tree for like quite a few of the 29 hours it took to bring this beautiful baby <laughs> into the world. She was my first, it was my first home birth and my first labor and I've been loath to sort of, you know, get rid of them and I'm just allowing time to take them because they are very fragile and they're glass and every year we lose one or two anyway. So in time they'll all be gone. But perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I might read them in these soft knitted and discs and protect them for a while longer. Hmm, I just had that idea sitting here talking to you, actually. Oh, that might actually be a very special way to preserve those baubles. All right, anyway, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> Please enjoy the vlog and I will see you for the final Vlogmas next time. Bye.